Hi, everyone. Uh, today's study is going to be on this um, track that we put out at the general conference this year, and I wish we would have had a lot more. Um, this is the study on the name of Yah and the name of Yasha. And before we start, I just wanted to say that uh, it's important what his name is. And uh, it's been revealed in these last days because it's the restitution of all things. In Acts 3, it talks about that in the last days, uh, there's going to be a restitution of all things. And Ellen G. White also talks about um, that every divine institution in the, la in, in the last days will be restored. And I can give you the exact quotes uh, if you want to write and ask for those quotes, please write below on this video. I wanted to say we, we went to the conference with this and we had two reactions. We had those who got it, looked at it, as soon as they saw Yah and Yasha, they were like, no, uh-uh, no. And then we had those who looked at it, read it, mysteries and the parables and words, Yah and Yasha, and they were interested. And so they read it. They took it with them. Uh, let's find out if there's going to be messages coming from the uh, conference or from the people or how should messages come in these last days. We're going to go to Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 70 and 71. But the Holy Spirit will, from time to time, reveal the truth through its own chosen agencies. And no man, not even a priest or a ruler, has a right to say, you shall not give publicity to your opinions, because I do not believe them. That wonderful I may attempt to put down the Holy Spirit's teaching. Men for a time attempt to smother and kill it, smother it and kill it, but that will not make error truth or truth error. The inventive minds of men have advanced speculative opinions in various lines, and when the Holy Spirit lets light, light shine into human minds, it does not respect every point of man's application of the word. Yah impressed his servants to speak the truth irrespective of what men had taken for granted as truth. Even Seventh-day Adventists are in danger of closing their eyes to truth as it is in the Savior because it contradicts something which they have taken for granted as truth but which the Holy Spirit teaches is not truth. Like I said, this is Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 70. So we had a lot of opposition at the conference because they are like, this, you need to be listening to the conference, to the people in there, and they would point inside and say, you need to go in there and listen to what they have to say. And so what I'd ask them, what, what did they say? Oh, they're, well, they're talking about, uh, uh, and they, they didn't have much. Uh, but they were like, oh, it was a great sermon, it was a great sermon. So this uh, study is about the name of Yah and Yasha. Now, why is it important? Because I know currently I just uh, wrote an email back and forth and um, was talking about this with one of the pastors in Texas because he was telling his congregation, because one person asked, should we be praying uh, his whole, uh, he had a 40 days uh, study about prayer and they asked him the congregation asked the pastor who is a Seventh-day Adventist pastor uh, well should we if, if prayer is so important should we be praying in the sacred names and at the time the person knew the name is Yah and Yah, Yahshua and Yahweh which please go to timesandlaws.com there's probably four different places where you can look and study and that's not even everything we have we just haven't had time to put it all up and by reading four different studies, you're getting all the information, different angles, and understanding why uh, in the last days we're not to use the son of Zeus, which is Jesus, which is what people say Jesus. Uh, you, if you pray to Zeus, you're not going to get an answer. Why are so many people suffering? Because they're praying to Zeus. Now, yes, you can be sincere, but now that we're living in the last days and these truths are being opened, there's no longer uh, an excuse to pray to a Zeus. Okay, so first of all, 
why are these messages not coming through the conference we just saw? That Yah is going to use his own chosen agencies. And no man, no priest, no ruler, no, uh, no person in the congregation can stop that from happening. Uh, here's another quote about last day truth. It says, the rebuke of the Lord will rest upon those who would bar the way that clear light should not come to the people. A great work is to be done, and Yah sees that our leading men have need of more light. So the leading men have need of more light, that they may unite with the messengers whom he sends. So if the leading men and the pastors of the conference, uh, people are going to them for light, but they're the ones who need the light. They're going to have to unite with the messengers that Yah himself chooses. If they do not unite, there's not going to be anything that can be done for them. Uh, it says that they may unite with the messengers whom he sends to accomplish the work that he designed shall be done. So the messengers are the ones that will be uh, using, doing the work, accomplishing the work. The master has raised up messengers and endued them with his spirit and has said, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins, Isaiah 58, 1. Let no one risk the, no one risk, run the risk of interposing between the people and the message of heaven. This message will go to the people, if, and if there's no, there were no voice among men to give it, the very stones would cry out. Well, we know that the very stones are the 144,000 because they're precious stones, not uh, made by hands. They're hewn uh, out, with the, the hands of Yasha. So it's not, he, uh, it's not human, but there are stones. Well, let's look at another quote about the truth. But we see that the Yah of heaven sometimes commissions men to teach that which is regarded as contrary to established doctrines. So Yah uses, commissions men to teach that which is regarded as contrary to established doctrines. So when we are giving you this doctrine, this is a doctrine that we are to use the sacred name of Yah and the son's name Yasha for a reason. This picture, I don't know if you can see it, it's a picture of a seal, a wax seal. And the reason why it's important to use Yah and Yasha is because that is your seal. You get the name of the father, the name of the son on your forehead and the name of the new city, which is Yasharon. So these are the three seals that you need to know. Uh, we have this study on our website, but we also can send you one. Type us a, a note and we can send you one of these studies. So why is it important? Because the leaders in the blindness, their in blindness of their minds give full sway to what is supposed to be righteous indignation against the ones who have set aside cherished fables. See, we've set aside the cherished fables that his name is Jesus or Jesus. That's a fable. That is something that the Hellenists uh, put into the Bible, translating Yasha to Jesus. They thought it sounded very similar, but it was their God, Zeus. And so if we keep doing that in these last days when it's been revealed, and this truth came to the SDA church in the late 90s, uh, there was a researcher named Hannah. She took all the information. She, she met with them. She showed them everything they had to show that the name was really Yasha, which means salvation. Um, and we'll go into the meanings also. But she brought this, and the church rejected it. They didn't say that it wasn't true. They just said, what do you want us to do, change all our writings? Well, yeah. So uh, they didn't want to do that. Of course not. And of course... At this time, the, the leading men are not the ones with the light. So when you go with them, with the truth, they're going to reject it because they don't want it. Uh, people that have darkness are not really looking for the light to be turned on. You know that. When you're asleep and you're comfortable in your bed and someone comes and turns on the light, you're going to resist it unless you know that the light is what's going to save you. And that's what this doctrine is. It's the doctrine of the names, Yah and Yasha. Many people are using Yahweh and Yahuwah and, and uh, Yahusha and things like that. But that is not biblical and it doesn't go to the, the root word that's used for salvation, which is Yasha. And then once you learn the name of Yah and Yasha, all kinds of light opens up about the name. 
and uh, we, well, we have other studies about that, like the bride's name, the 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 husband, his name is Yasha, and the the bride, uh, what she she is one hundred forty four thousand, and so we have a lot of things that now it all makes sense that you have to use Yah and Yasha, and his people are from the flock of Sharon or Yasharon, and Moses was king in Jeshurun. And so all this stuff comes together once you open your mind to the true name. Now, either you're going to have the name of Jesus and be um, deceived when there's a second coming and it's everybody saying, Jesus is here, Jesus is here. And, you, and if you knew his name, he would never call himself Zeus. He would never call himself son of Zeus, Jesus. So you're going to know that it's false when he comes. This false coming one that the UN is going to be... Uh, part of with the Luciferian agenda, uh, you're going to be fooled. And that's the reason why we came to the uh, Seventh-day Adventist um, meetings and people were upset. Why did you come here? Have your own conference. Oh, you should be listening to the conference men. Well, what does Ellen G. White say about the conference men? It says, the voice from Battle Creek, which that's where the conference used to be, which has been regarded as authority in counseling how the work should be done is no longer the voice of Yah. 17 MR, which is manuscript releases, and was written in 1896. It was no longer the voice of Yah in her day, yet people just cannot stop listening to these blind leaders. Uh, here's another one, manuscript release, uh, 17 manuscript release, page 216, 1898. It has been some years since I have considered the General Conference as the voice of Yah, Ellen G. White says. Many people were quoting Ellen G. White not knowing what she really uh, believes. Here's another one. That these men should stand in a sacred place to be as the voice of Yah to the people, as we once believed the General Conference to be, that is past. 1901. So it's been 116 years since she wrote that the conference is their voice has passed. We can see that today because Ted Wilson united himself with the Luciferian agenda. And that's in another video. Here's another quote about the general conference. Uh, the Lord's servants will be called enthusiasts. Okay, this is, uh, this is what we were being called in, uh, but not even really that. Uh, they, they, uh, they were very upset that we were bringing truth to the people that said the Lord's servants will be called enthusiasts yeah we're, we're enthusiastic ministers will warn the people not to listen to them we had people standing behind us don't take that don't take that don't take sacred truth from these people because they're not from the conference but Ellen G. White herself is talking about the fact that the conference no longer speaks for Yah why they're using the word God uh, pagan titles and they're using uh, Jesus uh, uh, Zeus you know Elijah came and he uh, cut off the heads of the Baal priests because they were teaching error so in our day 116 years after she said they no longer speak for the people it's way worse and people can't see it. They have no discernment of what's going on at the conference. And I would say for you to really do your study and due diligence because though we are giving you these messages, we can't study for you. Okay, here's another quote about the unction of the Holy Spirit because that's the only thing you need. You need the unction of the Holy Spirit and he speaks to his servants and these servants give it to the people and the people either accept it or reject it it says in the last solemn work we're in the last days this is the last solemn work few great men will be engaged so these great men that you're looking to few of them will be engaged y'all will work a work in our day that but few anticipate he will raise up and exalt among us those who are taught rather by the unction of his spirit than by the outward training of scientific institutions these facilities are not to be despised or condemned. They are ordained of Yah, but they can furnish only the exterior qualifications. You can get a, a, a piece of paper on the wall that says you're a 
pastor or preacher, but that is just a piece of paper. Only the Holy Spirit can work through people that are willing. Okay. Yah will manifest that he is not dependent on learned self-important mortals. Testimonies for the Church, uh, Volume 5, page 80 and 82. Now, this is who he gives the light to. To souls that are earnestly seeking for light and that accept with gladness every ray of divine illumination from his holy word, to such alone light will be given. So for those people who already think they're rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing, those at the conference, they feel they know everything, uh, they're not going to get more light because they're not looking for light. They already have all the light they want, which is a very small amount. Uh, that was written in Last Day Events, page 205. Okay, so there's many more on our website to read those quotes about how light's going to come. Now, our study that uh, we're bringing up today is the Yah and the Yasha. And why is it important about his name? I'm not going to be able to go through this whole thing today because this is a really uh, comprehensive study. And it's talking about the name of Yasha, which uh, it talks about that Yah speaks in parables. And the word parable is Mashal, which is connected to Yasha. You can hear the Yasha, Mashal in there. Um, you will see the connection so that you'll know why we're using Yasha today. It means salvation, but it also means um, it's a primitive root, which means to be open, wide, or free, uh, to be safe, to free a deliverer having salvation and to get, get salvation. Now, both of these, uh, the Father and the Son are the Word, and so uh, Mashal is a parable. It's a word. It's an understanding. And so let me just bring out the, the reason why we want to use the correct names. Everybody knows this verse. It's in Luke 11, 2. It says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, if his name is hallowed and you, you calling, you're calling him God or pagan title, um, that's okay when you don't know any better because people have been trying to fool all uh, his followers into using a false name. But it says, thy kingdom come after he says, hallowed be thy name. So once you know the name, the kingdom comes to you. You start using it, his kingdom comes. comes. It says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's go to another verse. It says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name. This is Yasha speaking. Or what you know as Jesus. It says, Together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 20. So when you have gathered in the name of Yasha, he's in the midst of you. And this is power. Why? Because his name is power and dominion. And once you learn what that word, word means, parable and Spanish palabra, that means word. Um, let's look at this. The word parable in Hebrew is mashal. And it's a primitive root. To have rule, to make dominion, to have dominion, to govern, to reign, to have power. That's one of the meanings of Mashal, which is, is per, uh, parable in English. The other word is, uh, the other meaning of Mashal is to use figurative language. That's what we know. A parable is you use figurative language or uh, it resembles uh, so you'll tell a story and this story resembles that story. It could be type and anti-type. And Yah and Yasha speak in parables. So they speak in words. They use words. They use, uh, when you 
use the name of Yasha, it has dominion, you have power, you reign. All these things, the reasons why you want to use Yasha is because Satan can't touch you when you are under the dominion of Yasha and you have power to rule in his name. And so when you speak his name and you pray in his name and you rebuke Satan in Yasha's name, then you're going to have power and dominion, the first dominion, like Adam and Eve, because we're in the last day, restitution of all things. How are these things going to happen if you're using a false God's name? He'll never even answer you because there is no such person as Zeus. Now, Satan can, uh, represents Zeus, but there is no God named Zeus. That's a fable. And we're supposed to leave behind all these fables. Okay. Now, Mashal. It also means in some original sense of superiority in mental action. So when you use this, you have an original sense of super superiority in mental action. In other words, that beginning when uh, Adam and Eve were created, they had a superior mind. Ellen G. White even talks about that. And we get it back when we use his name Yasha. And then we have, we're in the kingdom because it says, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. We're in the kingdom when he uses his name. Um, so this word mashal, which means parable, is related to Misha and uh, that's where the word Mishael comes from. I really encourage you to get this study or to see the study online because it goes verse by verse by verse and um, we're not going to do all of that here. I want you to to go in and read the study but I want to tell you why you need to use Yah and Yasha and then we prove where it comes from at the website and we prove the we have the documentation of his name being Yasha also after we learned all these things about the name of Yah and Yasha and Yasharon and the flock of Sharon uh, which is the fourth feeding flock that we're in now. SDA was Bashan, which was the first feeding flock. So folks, there's been two feeding flocks that you've missed out on of truth because these conference men have blocked it from you. We had a feeding flock named Carmel and we had a feeding flock named Gilead. And now we're in the fourth watch and we will be doing a whole study about the four watches, the four children, the four flocks, and uh, there's uh, so much to learn because we need to catch up, but the Holy Spirit can help you. So why use the name Yasha? Let's go to John 16, 24. It says, Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. So right there we learn that you haven't asked anything in his name hitherto, before now. Ask so that your joy may be full. This is the time to start using his name for healing, understanding, uh, opening of the parables, which is Mashal, and understanding the seals, which is the name of Yah, the name of Yasha, and the city's name, Yasharon. We have a whole study on that. We have several studies because there's so much information that have been coming forth about Yasharon and it means the Yah our righteousness, which that is where Jeremiah 33 uh, talks about that their name shall be the Yah our righteousness, which is Yasharon. So the remnant, uh, everything's in here. And so I just really encourage you to go to our study now on the website. It's not called Mysteries and the Parables of, and Words. It's called Are You Praying to Zeus? It's the same study, but it's a uh, bringing to attention that you've been praying to Zeus and you didn't know it. So go to that. We have a lot of information on it. And there was a verse that I wanted you to know and it was, let's see if I've got it here. Okay, well, I know it's in one of these studies. It's basically saying that 
Someone else is going to come in his own name and you'll believe him, but you will not believe Yasha. Here it is. The Savior said, I have come in my Father's name because see, Yah, Yah, Shah, uh, is from his Father's name, and you do not accept me. He says, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. There's no way that he came in the name of Jesus because Jesus is Zeus. When another will come in his own name, which that's what Satan's doing, he's coming in his own name, which is Jesus, you will accept him. So I have had many people be upset that we're using the name Yasha instead of Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with it. And don't change the names and don't change Ellen G. White's writings by putting in Yah instead of Yah, a God and Yasha. This is a fallacy because the original names are what we should be using for power and dominion and for the kingdom to come to us. And this last uh, dominion, uh, the only way that you're going to get dominion over this la in these last days and be safe is to go to this place of safety because his name means safety and the city's name is Yasharon and that is a, a place of safety and so if you do not believe these truths and understand that we're getting more truth in the last days you're going to be lost this is important we're not telling you to be uh, ugly or have our own ways but we need to go and find out what what's going on okay let me read a couple of quotes about these last days uh, let's go to testimonies for the church volume 8 page 28 it says let's talking about these last days and this drama in the last days so let's start back a little bit it says um, I'm going to go to page 27. The world is a theater. The actors, its inhabitants, are preparing to act their part in the last great drama. You're preparing to act your part. You're either going to accept truth in the last days coming from a common uh, place, or you're going to reject it. So you're going to play your part. It says, with the great masses of my mankind, there is no unity, except as man confederate to accomplish their self selfish purposes. So this confederation that, that's happening all around, I saw a video, thankfully, from some man. Uh, it wasn't too clear. Uh, you couldn't hear the sound very well, but he translated it, and it was in Brazil where SDAs had a conference of religious uh, freedom. But what they were really doing was uniting with the enemy. And I can say this. They're uniting with the Hare Krishnas. They're uniting with the Catholics. And they were acting like they were doing such a great deed. And really, in reality, they were uniting with Satan. And this is what the church has done. 116 years after, uh, Ellen G. White said they were no longer speaking for Yah. This is, this is what they have done by uniting. And they had uh, the logo. It's the Eye of Horus, but it looks like kind of a world with the eyelash kind of thing. The same uh, logo that's at the conference building that's the eye of Moloch and so people don't know these things because they don't search they don't research they depend on these uh, these blind men to lead them uh, let's look at this quote from prophets and kings about um, people that forsake the law and they unite with the world it says they that forsake the law praise the wicked those who are forsaking the law and we're talking about the law of Moses too, people um, Proverbs 28 4 says that they praise the wicked and that's what they were doing they were clapping for these Hare Krishnas and for these uh, Lucifer uh, Luciferians which are the Catholic Church they worship Lucifer underneath the Vatican you can do your research and find out for yourself uh, Google uh, put into YouTube and there's people that have shown the evidence of that when those who are uniting with the world yet claiming great purity plead for union with those who have ever been the opposers of the cause of truth. The Catholics have always been opposers of the truth. But since people don't study, they no longer remember their history. So they've been opposing the truth, and they're, this is what, what the Seventh-day Adventist Church is doing. They're in union. They plead for union with those who have ever been the opposers of the cause of truth. 
We should fear and shun them as decidedly as did Nehemiah. Nehemiah stood up for Yah, and that's what we need to do. Uh, yet, this is what the people were thinking at uh, GC, that, they, that the ministers and the leaders and the conference had great purity and that they were so great, but they don't do any, any do, do study. They don't, they don't look things up themselves. They're just uh, making flesh their arm, which means that they're just depending on these preachers to tell them that everything's okay. Peace and safety. That's what they got at this conference. They even ended it with, we'll see you in five years. Well, no, you won't. We're in the last days, folks. We're about to go through some troublous times. And uh, there's going to be a great judgment on the SDA church, especially the leaders. So there will not be uh, this great meeting that they're planning. Let's also read what James 4.4 4 says. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, those are those who are fornicating with the other churches, uh, these women, the harlot, the, the abominable abominations that they have, um, all these false doctrines, uh, doctrines of devils that they, these other uh, denominations have brought to the SDA church. You can read that in my other tracks, in our other tracks. Um, about uh you can go to our website and see the many many tekel you farsen and that has proofs there and i would just say there's so many people that just don't aren't looking for the facts you just want to believe this that everything's fine but the prophet that came the first prophet she was the first one there's four in the movement uh she was warning people about them Okay, so, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with Yah? So, friendship with the world is enmity, but people say, oh no, this is what we're supposed to do. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of Yah. So, if you're a friend of the world and Catholics, and you want to unite everybody together under falsehoods and false teachings and the common go goals and common good and unite yourselves when we really don't have anything in common with the enemy of, of Yah. We're not uh, brothers and sisters to say Satan's children. We're not. We're two different families. So for you to think that it's okay to do this, um, you are living under a false protection and you cannot... Um, you cannot be blessed by believing falsehoods like his name is Jesus. That's false. His name is not Jesus. That is the son of Zeus when you use that name. So we encourage you to go to our website and read this study. And if you'd like a physical paper copy of this study, uh, just write to us. We'd be glad to send you one. And it also anyone who'd like to help the cause of truth please write to us also and we'll be glad to show you where you can help with the cause financially the other thing i wanted to say is today is um, in y'all's kingdom today is the last day of the month the fourth month and we're about to start tomorrow is a new moon sabbath which the bible says we're to keep the new moons and we're to blow the trumpet in the new moon that's a sabbath and these are the things that these evil conference men are blocking from you. Um, tomorrow's a new moon, so tonight is actually a Sabbath. And you keep it just as a holy day. This is our calendar. If you want a calendar, you can go to the website. And you can ask us for a calendar. But you can just go to it, download it yourself, or just go see it every day. Or write down, just like I do on my own calendar. Sometimes I have more than one calendar. And I'll write the new moon days on my own calendar. But this is one that's done for me. Um, and we have all the actual days. So this study um, that we're having today is about the name of Yah and the name of Yasha. And where it comes from. And you can look it up yourself. So you can go to your strong concordance and you can look up the number 3467. That's Yasha. And it means to be safe. And 
uh, one of the the uh, quotes says, "You will no longer call me Bali, but you'll call me Yishi," which that is from Yasha. So you can look all this up. We have it all on our website, and we have it. If you can see, we have the, all the little um, charts to show you step by step what what uh, his name is. And one of the places where they were they kind of left it in there as a clue for you in the Old Testament is Psalm 68, 4. It says, Sing unto Yah, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, J-A-H, Jah. But we know in Hebrew there was no J, so that is really a Yah sound. And um, that gives us a clue because the letter Y was called Yod in um, Y-O-D. And so there you see that they just replaced the G and it makes the God sound. But really it's just Yah. And it's, it's easy. And many of the prophets had the name Yah in their names. Like Jeremiah, Nehemiah. Uh, so they, there, there are some clues for you to know that his name is Yah. Hallelujah. So um, knowing his name is going to give you dominion and power over Satan, over sin, over this world, over the new world order, over Jade Helm. Uh, I don't know if any of you know about Jade Helm, but today is supposedly the first day Jade Helm starts. And it looks like what they want to do with this new world order is take over the government of the United States. And the only way to do that is to perpetrate a false flag or cause something to happen so that everybody will come under this new world order which we believe the Pope is going to announce on September 25th at the UN and he'll be talking to the to the uh, the president and he'll be talking to the Congress and setting up this whole uh, system that he wants to control the world with he wants to control you he wants to know your every move Satan the Jesuits the Catholic Church want this world for themselves but i'm telling you now we're living in the last days and that's not going to happen yes we're going to go through some troublous times but there's a place for you to go there is a a uh, sanctuary where you will have uh protection and uh let me read one of these um let me just say this that the this is going to be an overwhelming surprise which we just read in 8 testimony 28 but the comforter is to reveal himself not in any speci specified precise way that man may mark out so if you were thinking that truth was going to come a different way or that the seventh day adventist church goes to the end that's what everybody was telling me yeah the 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 remnant goes to the end but not the church not the whole church uh, those 18 million people they're believing lies. You can't believe a lie and make it. Okay, this says that he will raise up from among the common people, men and women, to do his work, even as of old he called fishermen to be his disciples. There will soon be an awakening that will surprise many. There's going to be an awakening, folks, and it's happening now. Those who do not realize the necessity of what is to be done will be passed by. And the heavenly messengers will work with those who are called common people. So if you're looking for the SDA church to tell you some truth, you're going to be surprised. There's not going to be anything and hasn't been a message coming from them for over 100 years. Okay. The Yah servants will be called enthusiasts. I read that one. There was something I was going to tell you. Okay, the secret pavilion. The time of trouble. Uh, if you read Last Day Events, page 234, it's talking about Satan influencing uh, the people and Esau to march against Jacob. That's the SDA church marking, marching against the Yasharones, the people that are using Yasha's name. He sees that the angels are guarding them. See, they're going to be guarded. Uh, in the time when Yah's judgments are falling without mercy, there's going to be a time where there's going to be judgments falling without mercy. Oh, how enviable to the wicked will be the position of those who abide in the secret place of the Most High. 
So you're not gonna all be spread out one by one. It says there's gonna be a secret place of the Most High. And we have this written about at our website. So if you want, the, the, the wicked are gonna be envying this secret place. Okay. Uh, oh, how enviable to the wicked will be the position of those who abide in the secret place of the Most High. The pavilion in which the Yah hides all who have loved him and have obeyed his commandments. So, the commandments, what does the word command mean? If I give you a command, if I give my child a command, it comes from my mouth. It's, a, it's words. Uh, it's not just the ten commandments. It's all his commandments. It's the law of Moses. It's the feast days. And so, those who want to be in the secret place of the Most High have to keep all His commandments and not believe these wicked, evil ministers and leaders of the SDA Church teaching against the feast days because they say, oh, well, what are you going to do? Have a sacrifice of animals again? The feast days are holy days. And this is when... Um, our high priest, Yasha, which said, he said he came to fulfill the law, not abolish it. He didn't abolish the law of Moses. He came to fulfill. So today he meets on these days of the law of Moses, these feast days, to blot out your sins and to forgive you. And uh, he's your inter intercessor. He ever liveth to intercede for you. You need to read Hebrews. And we've got a study about this at our website. Um, but... These feast days are commandments that Yah spoke to Moses with his mouth. And Moses, like a good scribe, wrote them down. And these laws are these laws that have been blocked by the uh, conference men. And they're evil. And they don't want you to know how to get salvation in the last days. And so I want to end with that. That um, I'd like for you to go and read the mysteries of the parables. Uh, this is going to explain his name, the father's name, Yasha's name. Uh, it says, in the beginning was the word, that's the father, and the word Yasha was with God, and the word was God. So people use this in the wrong way, thinking that Yasha is God, but he's not. The word was the father, and the word was the son. So there's two words, two parables, two mysteries, and these mysteries are revealed to babes. It says, Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Matthew 10, 26. These are the things that are coming out in the last days. They're no longer hidden. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was there anything kept secret that it should not come abroad. Mark 4, 22. For nothing is secret that shall not be manifested, neither anything hid that shall not be known. In that hour... Yasha rejected, rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Master of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. We're babes. He's revealed these things to the babes. Why? Because every light is, is important to us. And is it important to you? Or do you want to reject the light that's coming? Um, I'd like to just end this study letting you know that there is more truth to be revealed to us and we are trying to share as much as we can with you we have another study coming up about the bride genesis 24 we have a lot of other studies and we just need the time to put them out there and we just hope that you share these with your friends so that they're not lost and this is something i wanted to talk about it's a little track that was written in the 1950s that i found it's called religious liberty now excluded from the sda church see you can't go into the sda church and show them truth because there's no religious liberty there even though they meet with other churches and talk about religious liberty and when i went to the adventist church this last week for 10 days and giving out the information that the holy spirit's been revealing for these last days we had people we had several people really get upset because they don't believe in religious liberty this is what the church was founded on, and yet our own members are against religious liberty. So may the Yah bless you. May Yasha come to you. 
in his word when you read it and when you read these studies go to timesandlaws.com and we hope that uh, you will start keeping the new moon Sabbaths uh, that starts tonight at sundown.